Hello, my name is Michael Sims, and I'd like to read to you five poems from my new book called American Ash, published by Ragged Sky Press. These uh, five poems are about happiness and acceptance. First one is called The Summer You Learned to Swim. When my daughter was four years old, I taught her how to swim at our neighborhood pool, one of the great accomplishments of my life, and uh, I really enjoyed it. We spent all summer doing that. The Summer You Learned to Swim The summer you learned to swim was the summer I learned to be at peace with myself. In May, you were afraid to put your face in the water. But by August, I was standing in the pool once more when you dove in, then retreated to the wall, saying, You forgot to say sugar. So I said, Come on, sugar, you can do it. And you pushed off and swam to me and held on, laughing, your hair stuck to your cheeks. You hiccuped with joy and swam off again. And I dove in, too, trying new things. I tried not giving advice. I tried waking early to pray. I tried not rising in anger. Watching you, I grew stronger. Your courage washed away my fear. All day I worked hard thinking of you. In the evening I walked the long hill home. You were at the top, waving your small arms, pittering down the slope to me, and I lifted you high, so high to the moon. That summer all the world was soul and water, light glancing off peaks. You learned the turtle, the cannonball, the froggy, and the flutter, and I learned to stand and wait for you to swim to me. I'm originally from Texas. I, I live in Pittsburgh now, but uh, I grew up in Texas. And there's a custom there that I'm very fond of. In the restaurants, especially the diners, the waitresses call all the men by pet names like Honey, Sweetie, Darling. And I'm living in the North now for some time. I, I miss that. Oh, Darling, I like it when women I don't know call me Darling. There's something kind and generous in the tone without being sexual. The intimacy of strangers is luminous, the way we wish well for the man who lost his car keys, the woman coming in out of the rain, the girl who missed her bus, the boy who stutters. The waitress who offers more coffee calls all the men at my table darling. She may be somebody's wife, somebody's mother, somebody's friend, but right now, to us, she's the intimate stranger named Dolores, which means sadness, inviting us with a smile to have dessert. You want me to alamode that for you, darling? Evening. Always it will be late summer in your mind. Birches give off a full and dark light, with emotion you know will abide and return every evening. You are changed by small things. An elm seed spins to earth, and like your talent for the cello, the possibilities remain enclosed. Being ordinary makes you a hero. Sweeping the porch, looking at the sky, you become more than yourself. The solace for being dull is being perfectly at ease with the world. All afternoon, the afternoon sails in and out the window, and the first star starts the lake singing. As I said, I'm originally from Texas, and when my mother died, a few years back, uh, we poured her ashes and the ashes of my father in the Llano River, 
uh, close to where they lived. And uh, sometime after that, I went back and visited that spot and wrote this poem. It's called Uncorrected Proof. Uncorrected Proof. My mother, who was much wiser than I knew, used to say, make sure there are mistakes in everything you do, so the gods won't be jealous. And sure enough, I find my mistakes spreading like blue bonnets on the dry plain beside the Lano River, where we spread her ashes with the ashes of my father, whom she loved. She loved this imperfect man and found beauty in his mistakes. Imagine. And the river carried her ashes down to the Brazos and the Gulf of Mexico, and who knew she'd come back as a breeze on this patio. It is springtime in the hill country, and the blue bonnets are like a blanket on the dry land, and the Indian paintbrushes dab their reds and yellows as the shadow of the storm passes over them. I once knew a composer who listened so intently when I spoke, he didn't hear me. The grief passed long ago, and what's left is sunlight and shadow taking turns. In the morning the storm builds, in the afternoon the rain passes. A translator, famous for his versions of Akhmadava, said he was trapped between heaven and earth. Imagine being so in love, the mistakes we make keep us on the ground, imperfect and happy. Which was it? Rain falling on dry sand? Steam rising in the valley? The mountain turning blue in the gathering dark? Or was it rosy-fingered silence? As my friend Jose says, yes, metaphors are things with sharp edges that can hurt you. Most days I'm sleepwalking, passing trees without seeing them, hearing birds and neighbors who want nothing more than acknowledgement, a simple good morning or a nod, and then as if, as if, for the first time ever, I'm awake. This doesn't happen often, just every now and then, like sunlight on a patio with bougainvillea, a profusion of hibiscus and a scent of salt carried by a breeze from the ocean hundreds of miles away. Last poem I'll read is called Consider the Hummingbird. <coughs> <clears throat> the uh, events, the kindergarten events that are described in the middle of the poll actually happened. I was a uh, curious and uh, odd child. Consider the hummingbird. Consider the hummingbird, how like the mind it is, flitting, bee balm, to day lily. 1,200 heartbeats per minute, 200 wing beats per second, in a universe 12 billion years old, in pursuit of love. The hummingbird can dive 60 miles per hour in the courtship dance, 250 breaths per minute, forward, backward. Its red throat is not pigment in the feathers, but a refraction of light, like the shimmering of intelligence we see everywhere in the garden. And the child, this would be me, at nap time in kindergarten, lying on a mat on the floor in the darkened room, 50 other kids, Miss Verlaine standing, high heels right next to my head. Face up, I silently slid my mat toward her feet until my head was exactly between her high heels, and I looked up her nylon legs, looking up, up, up into darkness between her legs, then slid my mat back and pretended to sleep. 
but little Alice Stuyvesant saw me, and all afternoon she looked at me, and I didn't know whether she would tell the teacher, but I didn't care, because I had looked into the darkness and survived. And looking up into the night sky is like that. The mystery is you can't see much, but you imagine everything. Even God, if you want to call it that, this intelligence, this cunt, this darkness we live inside and is everywhere, even here in the garden where the hummingbird moves from day lily to bee balm its small feet tucked behind its muscled chest with more than 250 breaths per minute, its wings beating 200 flaps per second, its heart the size of a peanut squeezing out 1,200 beats per minute, and how much faster is the mind with neurons sending electrons across 30 trillion synapses every second, and how much faster than the mind is the mind of the universe, which, as night comes, we see the stars and the stuff between stars, the living tissue of reality that gives us this hummingbird, the whirring of its wings and the glint of red at its throat, a deep mystery in the mere fact we experience the world as whole and beautiful with color and music and joy in the redness of red the taste of mint the stars popping out like musical notes thank you